Welcome to Learners of Electronics and Communication. In this lecture video, we'll discuss special purpose diodes. So first we'll discuss the photodiode. A photodiode is a special purpose diode. The name itself says that it is photodiode. Diode is nothing but the normal PN junction diode. Photo is light. So this diode will convert the light energy into electrical energy here. So the definition says it is a special purpose diode which converts light energy to electrical energy. This is the symbol of the photodiode. So when the light is in illuminated on this PN junction diode, it converts the light energy to electrical energy. We will see the mechanism how the photodiode converts light energy to electrical energy. This is the circuit diagram for photodiode. This PN junction diode is operated in reverse bias condition. When it is operated in the reverse bias condition, before illuminating a light on this PN junction diode, not, nothing but when the light is absent here. So since it is operated in reverse bias condition, because of this negative supply voltage, the majority charge carriers will get attractive force towards this one and the minority charge carriers will get repulsive force from the battery. They will cross the junction and they will contribute for flow of current. The current contribution due to the minority charge carriers is nothing but reverse saturation current. In case of photodiode, we will call that reverse saturation current as dark current when the light is absent here. The dark current says flow of current in the photodiode due to absence of light. When the light is illuminated on this photodiode, so if I am writing in a crystal structure using an atom for the p-type the boron is dropped for the silicon so the majority charge carrier will be whole for the p-type here and for n-type the phosphorus is dropped here so the majority charge carriers will be electrons in case of n-type inside the depletion region there won't be any majority charge carriers so it will be having only the minority charge carriers are a neutral atom here once the light is illuminated on this neutral atom here. The electrons present at the outermost shell of these silicon atoms will get sufficient energy from this light and they get ejected here. Once the light is illuminated, these electrons will get sufficient energy from the light and they get dislodged or ejected from this outermost shell. So once the electron is ejected, it creates a hole here. So these ejected electrons will start moving towards the positive terminal of a battery and these holes created inside this one depletion region will start moving towards the negative terminal of a battery because of attractive force. So the ejected electrons, the charge carriers will be increased because of this light energy. So those charge carriers will contribute for flow of current here. That current is called as bright current. That bright current is because of presence of light here. So if I am writing a plot for uh, VI characteristics of this photodiode, since it is operated in reverse bias condition, first in the absence of light, because of this external supply voltage, a small amount of reverse saturation current or dark current will flow through this one that is I0. As the intensity of this light is increased, more number of charge electrons will get ejected here. So the free charge carriers will be increased. The amount of flow of current, the bright current also increases. So as the intensity increases, the amount of bright current also increases here. This movement of charge carriers because of this light energy is nothing but the electrical energy. That is how the light energy is converted to electrical energy. This is the mechanism of photodiode. Next we will see another special purpose diode that is light emitting diode. It is also called as LED. So as the name itself suggests that it emits the light that means it converts electrical energy to light energy the definition says it is a special purpose diode which converts electrical energy to light energy this is the symbol of led so which is emitting a light 
So coming to the mechanism of this light emitting diode, here the p-n junction diode is operated in forward bias condition but in case of photodiode the p-n junction diode was operated in reverse bias condition. So here since it is operated in forward bias condition the majority charge carriers present in this p-type and n-type that is holes and electrons will get triple c force from this battery and they start moving in the opposite direction. Once they start moving in the opposite direction these holes will go from p to n and these electrons will go from n to p here. Once they move across this junction they will meet the opposite polarity charge carriers. These holes will meet the electrons here and they form electron hole pair and these electrons will go and meet the positive charge carrier they make a electron hole pair. That is nothing but once they meet the opposite polarity charge carriers they will undergo recombination. Once the charge carriers undergoes recombination they will emit some certain energy here. That energy is nothing but light energy. So this is how the electrical energy is converted to light energy here. So here also the light will be emitted. Once they undergo recombination they will emit some certain energy called as light energy. But this emitted light will not be visible in our naked eyes for a normal semiconducting material like silicon and germanium. To see the emitted light in our naked eyes the energy gap of the semiconducting material used here should be greater than 1.8 electron volts. For a silicon we are having the energy gap as 0.7 electron volt and for germanium 0.3 electron volts so which is less than 1.8 electron volts. So the emitted light after the recombination cannot be seen in our naked eyes if you are using silicon or germanium as semiconducting materials. So we should use the semiconducting materials for this diode which are having the energy gap greater than 1.8 electron volts. So these are the some examples of semiconducting materials which are having energy gap greater than 1.8 electron volts. They are alloy of gallium arsenic, gallium arsenic phosphate, gallium phosphate. So if you are using the semiconducting material as gallium arsenic, the emitted light will be having a color infrared. So the wavelength will be in infrared range. So which we can see in our naked eyes. So if you are using gallium arsenic phosphate, so the emitted light color will be red to red or yellow. If, if I am using a semiconducting material as gallium phosphate, the emitted light will be red or green which can which in which we can see in our naked eyes. So the condition is the semiconducting material used for constructing this light emitting diode should be having the energy gap greater than 1.8 electron volts here. Next is photocoupler. Photocoupler is nothing but it's a combination of LED and light emitting diode and photodiode. Here the we know that LED will convert electrical energy to light energy that converted light energy is used as a source for this photodiode to convert that light energy to electrical energy. So in case of LED it converts electrical energy to light energy and it is operated in forward bias condition. In case of photodiode it converts light energy to electrical energy and it is operated in reverse bias condition.